What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 34 in the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question shows us this weird looking figure that looks a bit like a wonky house. We know that this side is 6 inches, this side is 8 inches, and this side is 5 inches, and we're supposed to find the length of this dotted line to the nearest inch. Alright, so what we're going to need to know to do a question like this is the Pythagorean theorem, and also it'll be really helpful to know some stuff about rectangles. And I'll start with the rectangles bit. Um, we can see that we have a right triangle with this side, this side, and this side. We can also see that this side, this side, this side, and this side make a rectangle because we have four right angles. And this dotted line actually splits this rectangle into two right triangles. And I will use the property of rectangles that opposite sides are congruent and say that if this side is five inches, this side also has to be five inches. Now, that's not a 15. I know it might look a little bit like a 15, but it's a 5. Just the number is written in blue. So what that tells me is that if I know this side, I'll be able to use the Pythagorean theorem to use this leg and this leg to find this side and treat it like a hypotenuse. But first, I've got to treat this side like a hypotenuse with these two as my legs. So let me go ahead and set up The Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. My two legs, I'm going to name a and b. My hypotenuse is c. So then I know that 6 squared plus b is 8, so 8 squared equals, and I don't know c yet, so I'll keep that in brown, but I know that c squared is whatever we get when 6 squared and 8 squared are added together. Now, whether I use my calculator or my times tables or mental math or whatever, I should know that 6 squared is 36 and 8 squared is 64, and that is actually 100. And if I know that 100 is some number times itself, I can use times tables or I can plug the square root in my calculator. So the square root of 100 is 10. So this C equals 10. And now, I'm going to actually scrap this. I'll leave it there so you can still see what we did, but I'm going to have to start a new Pythagorean theorem um, problem. I'll do that over on this side. Once again, I start with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But this time, this is my hypotenuse, and these are my legs. So now, for this triangle that I've outlined in green, 10 is a, 5 is b, and C is this hypotenuse that I'm trying to find. So this becomes 10 squared plus 5 squared equals, and I still don't know what C is, so I'll call this C squared. Now this problem is going to work exactly the same as the other problem. I figure out 10 squared, which is 100. I figure out 5 squared, which is 25. 100 plus 25 gets me 125. So I know that 125 equals c squared. And now the last step of any Pythagorean theorem problem, once I get it down to something squared equals something, is just to take the square root of that number. Because I would take the square root of both sides, and square root and squared cancel each other out. So c is going to be the square root of 125, which is a little more than 11. So I need to look back at my answer choices. It asks, what is the length of this dotted line to the nearest inch? 11.18 or 11 and 18 hundredths or something like that, that's closest to 11 inches, so my answer is B.